Insight with Apostle Tope Aladinusi. When you go to a place, you find favor. You don't know why. They just like you. You say, I know just like me. Look of my smile. It's not your smile. Fire! There is something inside of you. Don't attribute it to carnal things. There is something welling up. People don't even know. They're just drawn to you. You just begin to get resolved that everybody everywhere where people are struggling because fire is all around you. Christ Treasure Center, raising Christ-like leaders. 2 Timothy 1, 6-8 I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. Do you see that? Verse 6 it says, this is why I remind you to do what? Fan it to flames. You have the control. You fan it into flames. If you don't fan this fire into flames, nobody will see the fire. You will be like an ordinary believer, like every other person on the face of the earth. Show you another verse of scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5.19. 1 Thessalonians 5.19. He says, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. The NIV and the KJV say, do not quench the Spirit. It says, quench not the Spirit. You do not quench. You fan into flames. And this is very interesting because God is all powerful. He can do all things. Nothing can stop him. <laughs> is there anything that God cannot do? And he says, you, don't quench the spirit. As powerful as God is, you have control to allow him to express himself or not. God left us with our choices. He has deposited the spirit in you, but you decide whether you fan the flames, allow the spirit of God in you to have expression, that power in you to have expression, or you decide whether you want to quench it. The ball is in your court. So many times in prayer that we pray, Oh Lord, send down revival. Listen to this. God desires revival more than you do. But men are not available. Men are quenching the fire. Men are not fanning the flames. It is dependent on us. For you to fan these flames, you need to beware of fire quenchers while you re keep rekindling your fire. So quickly I'll talk about Things that quenches fire and things that rekindles fire. The first thing I want to talk about today, which is very important, is the wrong perception about money. Wrong perception about money. I strongly believe from the scripture, that, as I read this, my account of the scriptures, that the biggest fire quencher for the believer is the wrong perception about money. That's why I try to spend time every time to tell us about the fact that money should not drive our lives because money will come to us easily as our servant to save us. It's lack of understanding that makes people spend all their life thinking and chasing about after money. Money is very important. Money is very important. How do I know? I don't need to be trained in school. I know. Money is important. But I think we, many times we misplace the place of money. Acts chapter 8, verse 18. Allow us to see how somebody, you know, had the wrong perception about the things of God and money and also learn some lessons from it. 
the early disciples um, the, after Christ that arose again, only in Jerusalem that people were saved. And so when they broke forth to places like Samaria and Judea, people started getting saved. They had to call for the apostles to come and lay hands on them. And when, when verse 18 says, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given when the apostles laid hands on the people, he offered them money to buy this power. Verse 19. Let me have this power too, he exclaimed, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. But Peter replied, may your money be destroyed with you. I love it in KJV. Say, thy money perish with you. <laughs> For thinking God's gifts can be bought. You can have no part in this for your art is not right with God. Verse 21. It says, you will have no part in this for your heart is not right in the sight of God. When Peter or Simon saw power in display, he offered money. He had a wrong perception regarding the gifts and money. And I like the way Peter said it. He says, you will not have a part in it. Why? Your heart is not right. The, 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 the way you think about this thing with respect to money shows that something is fundamentally wrong, and so you will not enjoy and experience this power. And although he was speaking to a man that was an unbeliever, it's similar and applies to believers because when your heart is not right, even though the power is now in you, the fire is now inside of you, it will find expression. You will see lack of expression. Now, what are ways, what are the things that we do that shows that our hearts are not right with money or with the use of money? Uh, the first thing I have here is when you use dishonest and underhanded means to get money. When you want to, you know, defraud somebody, you know, people are thinking of money and thinking that if they are even in their mind calculating wrong ways to make money. It's, it's, it's a way to let the fire to be quenched. Because you are saying, God, you know, when you steal and you use dishonesty to get money, you know what you are saying in simple terms? It's idolatry. Say, God, I need this money. I don't even believe that you can provide for me. Or I've been waiting, you've not showed up, you're slow. So I want to help myself. I believe in my thinking and my way, my machinations and arrangements. You, your own, I can't wait, I can't trust it. So it, it, you are sending a communication to God that is very, that is very wrong. It's idolatry. So 1 Timothy 6, 17 says, Charge them who are rich in this world not to be high-minded or to trust in riches, which is so unreliable. So their trust should be in God who richly give us all we need for our enjoyment. God wants to give you all that you need. So don't be a slave of money thinking that, oh, I must just get it by all means. Also, one other way to have a wrong perception about money is when money is the commander in chief of your life or money drives your life. If you want to be sincere, an average person today or many people today, they are driven by money. Money decides everything. And the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Money, it didn't say money is the root of all evil. Money is, money is not moral or immoral. Money is amoral. Money is not moral or immoral. It's amoral. It usually takes the form and the identity of the one that owns it. If money finds itself in good persons, and the money will be used for good things. If money finds itself in the house of a bad person, money will be used for bad things. So we don't say money is not good. We already read it in 1 Timothy 6, 17. They say he wants to give you all things richly so that you can enjoy. But when you have this mindset whereby, like 1 Timothy 6, 10 says, let's look at 1 Timothy 6, 10. It says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith. They've pierced themselves with many sorrow. People wander from the true faith because they were craving for money. 
So we're not saying money is bad, but when you have this inordinate affection for money, everything that you are thinking about is money, everything that controls your mind is money, everything is king shati low wo low wo, king shati low wo low wo. Everything, let me just have this money, sha. If I must just have this money, sha. I must just make this money. If that is what is always clear, it says you are going to enter problem. You will pierce yourself. And all kinds of evil will be springing out from your life. And what happened? People who have done that, they've won that from the faith. The fire that should be coming, you will be the one walking away from the fire because of the love of money. Many people today cannot pray because of money. If you check a lot of people, why, look at, why don't you pray like you want to pray? You don't have time. You are busy. Why are you busy? Because you are looking for money. Why don't you study the Bible or evangelize? No time. Busy. What are you busy doing? Looking for money. Everything that is taking us out from the things that we know we should be doing, check it very well, is tied most times to the pursuit of money. The way God has designed it is that if you are faithful in little things, you're faithful in much. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Whenever you have the opportunity and God starts providing you with money, you have to be faithful with that little. It says if you are faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. If you are tolerant in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Next verse says, And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? They put money in your hand. You're already unfaithful. How will fire born? The little money that enters your hand, nobody can hear what again. Let's look at the next verse, verse 13. It says, now no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. He didn't say you cannot serve God and the devil. He said you cannot serve God and be enslaved to, the devil, uh, enslaved to, the, uh, to money. The number one challenge is the wrong pastor to money. It's not even the devil. You cannot serve God and money. God will put money in your hands. But how do you show faithfulness with that little? Since we are not faithful with that, how can we begin to let the true riches that money cannot buy to be finally shown in your life? How? How? Some people have small money. You will not see them in church again. The moment they just have small money, they don't come to church again. Some people have small money. They remember the sin of 10 years ago. Sin that you have left that God has been able to conquer. You, 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 you rewind. So you come back. Some people, they have ordinary 500,000 naira. They have like 17 side chicks. See, why you always say 17? It's just a number. <laughs> because they have more money now, they have side chicks. Some people, they start walking. When you see their walking steps, on top of 500,000 naira, you that God wants to make a billionaire. You now have one small money. Nobody can hear what they get in the only place. The way you are carrying yourself as though you've made it. See, listen, God wants to take you very far. He, he's making a billionaire out of you. But he will test you with small and see how you manage it. Say, ah, this one, despite this money, he's still focusing on, th- on, the, on me. He's still putting his eyes on me. He will release more. He's still putting his eyes on me. He will release more. He can't give you everything once. He, he can, if if 500000 I can crash you. I'm, if, if you are the one, you can't two billion. I can't crash you. Let's kick it easy with this guy. It's the truth. He can, if they can crash you with 500,000 naira, you see your 900,000 naira, you don't want anybody to hear what they gain. You are already committing sin. You are buy data and using data for pornography. Before, there was no data. Your phone was black and white. Uh, what was that phone? Analog phone. No data, nothing, because that was what you could afford. Now you have good phone because the Lord has provided. Smart phone. And you can survive for data. You spend all your time watching pornography. You finish yourself. You are saying, God, you can't trust me with money. And you only gave me 50,000 naira. My head cannot, my, all my head is touching. All the fuse in my head are blown up. What about 50,000 naira? So, God, take it easy with 100 kilo because the whole body will blow up. <laughs> Luke chapter 18, verse 18. Once a religious leader, and I like that, a religious leader, not an ordinary man, asked Jesus Christ this question Good teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked him. Only God is truly good. 
But to answer your question, you know the commandments under the Old Testament because Jesus Christ lived under the Old Testament. It was his death and resurrection that ushered the new. It says you must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. And I love this guy's response. The man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Verse 22, when Jesus heard his answer, he said, there is still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will, you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Next verse. But when the man heard this, he became very sad, for he was very rich. He became very sad. Ah, I should go and sell everything I have. Why? Because that is his future. Many people see money as their security. I said it uh, earlier on. You need to work to conquer the love of money. If there's anything you must conquer for you to really move with God is to conquer the love of money. There is a confidence and security you have when you conquer money that I cannot describe to you. You better feel it. You better know it. You are secured in God. Because you know that even though they throw you in the Sarah desert, you will do well. Because God is there. Your security is not tied to your pockets, your bank account. It's tied to your father in heaven. Christ Treasure Center, raising Christ-like leaders. Searching for a place you can call home? A place of love and warmth. A place of fellowship. A place for the young and the old. A place of prayer. A place of study of the word. A place of the supernatural. Different people from all walks of life and united in one purpose, mirroring Christ's pricelessness in every heart, in every homeland. Worship with us every Sunday by 7.30 and 9.30 a.m. and on Wednesdays by 6.30 p.m. at CTC Place, 112 Commercial Avenue, Sabo Yaba, Lagos. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter on the handle at eChristTreasure. Email ctc at christtreasure.org or log on to www.christtreasure.org. Telephone 0700 Treasure. That is 0700 8732 78. Seven three, Christ Treasure Center. Welcome home. Christ Treasure Center, raising Christ-like leaders. Second Timothy one, uh, verse six to eight, it says that we should fan the flames. So what, what are the things that will help you to fan these flames so that you are burning brightly? First of all, I want to look at, I will say, be united in purpose with the company of believers who are on fire. Be united, you know, in purpose in the comp with the company of believers who are on fire. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says that, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. All of them, 120 of them, they were in one accord in one place. Verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven 
as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. They were in one accord. You know when you have people who are 120, all sort of all manners of opinions, wishes, desires. Let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. This is the way it should go. Let's do it this way. But they were all in one accord. They were all in one accord. They were united in purpose. They were gathered together. They had received instruction from Jesus Christ. That instruction was driving them. And they were all united, waiting, waiting endlessly for the move of the Spirit of God in that time. Listen, God doesn't do stuff in isolation. God wants us to work as a team and in partnership. Why why am I saying this? It's very important. See, we need each other to keep our fire burning. Iron sharpens iron. We need to help one another. We need to revive each other from time to time. For example, these are logs of This guy is burning in Alagbado. Oh, sorry, Banana Island. <laughs> this lady, she's burning in Ikoi. She's burning in Leki. She's burning in Bagada. They are all burning. Have you ever seen a log of wood burning? Just one burning. Imagine this, we have come together, put them together. Have you ever seen when you put, when you want to do suya and you put that together and it burns? If they were burning individually, where would the fire get to? Maybe like here. When they come together, where does the fire hide? It goes higher. Thank you very much. You can go to your seat. That is the design of God for us. See, don't be struggling to be a star in an aquarium when we should all be taking over the ocean. Everybody wants to just have an aquarium and they are alone, in isolation. That's what we are seeing. And it's social media that brought that. Because social media has given you opportunity to have your mind, to have your platform. There's nothing wrong. Everybody, these days, people are working in isolation. No, God wants us to work together. This work is partnership. We're supposed to collaborate together. Bring your fire. I bring my fire. You bring your fire. By the time we put the fire together, we have a bond fire that burns brightly. And even though my own is getting, if my own was wet, imagine one of those guys was wet wood. Can he burn on his own? But when he's near one that is burning, that fire for for dry that wood from wet to dry. Then after you start burning. When we are together in one accord, in singleness of purpose, this fire begins to burn more brightly. Jeremiah 23, verse 29. He says, it's not my word like a fire, said the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rocks in pieces. He says, it's not my word. Let's look at it in the New Living Translation. He says, does not my word burn like fire? He says, word is like fire. When you want to see this fire of God that work in you, you let the word to have free course in your life. His word is like fire. It says, not my word like fire. Anytime you obey the word of God, you manifest fire. Anytime you speak the word of God, you speak fire. Anytime you think about the word of God, you are thinking fire is welling up inside of you. It says, not my word like fire. You want this fire to be blazing in you. You want to fan of the flames. Let the word of God dwell in you so richly. When you have a situation in your life that seems to be contrary to what the Lord has called you to do or what the Lord has proposed for your life, speak fire to that thing because the word is like fire. It says our God, Hebrews 12, 29, is a consuming fire. Sometimes you send this fire to consume the works of the devil. And how do you send the fire? Send the word. It says, not my word like fire. Any contrary situation in your life, speak fire. You want to see the fire of God show forth in your life. Fill up your life with the word. 
fill up your life with the world. Say, it's not my world like fire. Because fire has been built around you. There's a pillar of fire around you. Because as you leave the world, as you obey the world, fire is oozing out, putting a shield. When you go to a place, you find favor. You don't know why. They just like you. You say, ah, everybody just like me. Look of my smile. It's not your smile. Fire! There is something inside of you. Don't attribute it to carnal things. There is something welling up. People don't even know. They're just drawn to you. You just begin to get resolved. That everybody, everywhere, where people are struggling. Because fire is all around you. People just notice you. There are one other people here. Somebody will come and say, can you, you, can you come and do something? They say, ah, why do they select you? Fire! They just pick you. They just pick you. You are the one that is favored. You are the one that sees good things. You are the one that great things happen to. Because the world is oozing out of your life. Fire is around you like a pillar. Brethren, this is the life to live. Christ Treasure Center, raising Christ like leaders. We believe that you have received a message from God. And before we go, we'd like to ask you a question. If you could not control the date you were born and the family you were born into, do you think you should be in control of your life? You know, God should be the one to control your life. So if you want to give Jesus control, you want to accept God's sacrifice. You can say this word after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross and on the third day you rose again. I give you control of my life today and I believe I am born again. Amen. If you said that prayer, then you've taken a great step in your life. We would like to mentor you in this wonderful journey as you walk with the Lord. Please write us or send us an email using the details on your screen. Hallelujah. Thank you.